Hello, everyone, and welcome to the H1 2021 figures of the ADAC Engineering Group AG. I'm Sebastian Lehmann, Head of Investor Relations, and I will guide you through. Before we go into the details, please carefully view our legal disclaimer. As usual, we're going to start with an overview on the current market environment. Throughout the last quarters, we have seen a positive recovery in the automotive market, and this positive trend continues into a strong Q2. The OEMs and their suppliers are posting very strong results, and this also helps our ESP market to grow. We have seen orders coming from international, but now also from domestic customers, which filled our order book very well in the second quarter. The capacity utilization over the last month and quarters has significantly increased, and we are now at a level in certain areas where we, where we can say the capacity is almost utilized at full. This also leads to a decrease in the usage of short-time work, which has been below 100 employees at the end of H1. Overall, the visibility, which has been a major challenge throughout the last quarters, has become significantly better. We are now at a stage where a forecast is more reliable than before, and we are able to give you a guidance for the rest of the year, which I will do at the end of this video. However, the level of uncertainty is still slightly above normal due to the corona pandemic, but also supply restraints. But this impact of these restraints is currently very limited, so we see a market recovery which is picking up speed. What does this mean for our H1 figures? Here are the key highlights. First of all, let's talk about the revenues. The revenues were up by 0.2% to 333.1 million euros. This doesn't look very well at the first glance, but if we keep in mind that during Q1, we had to post a revenue decrease, we're now seeing a very strong revenue increase of 26.6% in the second quarter. The next good news is that all of our three segments contributed with a double digit growth. So all our three segments are growing in the second quarter. And this transfers into a decent margin of 10.7 million euros after six months and a corresponding margin to 3.2%. In the second quarter, the margin was even higher with 5.2% and all of our three segments being profitable. Looking a little bit ahead, we always take a look at our order book and the order intake. The order intake has been very well with 390 million euros. This is about 6% above the previous year's figure. And the order book is already significantly above the H1 2020 figures, but not only above 2020 figures, but also above the 2019 figures. So our order book has already reached or even exceeded the pre-crisis level. The international business, which is another good sign for us, um, accounts now for more than 44% of our revenues in the first half of this year. In 2018, we gave out the target of about 40% of our revenues should be coming from international customers in order to balance our portfolio. We have now already exceeded this figure, um, but as the domestic market is picking up speed again and is recovering uh, as fast as the international business, we expect uh, international revenues to account for somewhere in between 40 to 42, 43% until the end of this year. Let's go a little bit more into the details of our H1 figures. First of all, let's have a view on the adjusted EBIT. As said before, we saw a significant increase in adjusted EBIT of more than 25 million euros compared to last year. The really good news here is this happens on a comparable revenue base. As I said before, the revenue has only gone up by 0.2%, but the adjusted EBIT is now up by more than 25 million euros. This clearly underlines the effectiveness of all the measures we took last year in order to lower our cost base and to become more profitable. One effect, of course, uh, you can see here in the headcount. The headcount has decreased by 325 employees year over year, but also more than 100 employees quarter over quarter. We are now at 7,764 employees at the end of H1, and this should be a base where no further decrease is expected. As I said before, in certain units, we are already uh, at a very high capacity utilization. So these units will start to recruit new people, and we expect uh, an increase in headcount in accordance with the market recovery. Looking at the CapEx, it is more or less the same picture as with the headcount. CapEx is slightly up year over year, but still only at 2.3% of our total revenues. We also expect the CapEx to grow over the next quarters, 
but we will not surpass our internal limit of 4% of revenues. The trade working capital is a little bit misleading at the first glance because on a year-over-year -year comparison, it is still significantly down by more than 40 million euros. However, if you compare these figures to the end of 2020 figures, you see that we are already building up working capital. This is another sign for the market recovery, and uh, we will continue to do so over the next quarters. As a result, uh, this also transfers, of course, into our cash flows, which were negative at the end of H1, and we expect those to be negative also by the end of the year due to the market recovery. Before we come to the outlook, let us have a quick view on the net financial debt. As always, we show this in two pillars. The first pillar is including leasing liabilities, which we had to take on our balance sheet according to IFRS 16. And the second pillar is without these leasing liabilities. In both cases, we have managed to bring the net financial debt significantly down. The net financial debt without leasing at the end of H1 is at only 10.9 million euros. As you can see, we have more than 110 million euros of cash in hand. Moreover, we have unused credit lines of more than 100 million euros. This also led to our decision to prematurely uh, terminate the KFW loan, which we uh, signed in November last year. So we are now at a stage where we have sufficient cash, sufficient limits at our bank lines. So we are well prepared for the further recovery of the market. And this leads us to the outlook for the complete year 2021. As said before, there is still unusual high uncertainty in the market. Nevertheless, we're now at a stage where we can give a guidance. And based on the expected continuation of the global economic recovery, our overall sales are expected to grow in a range somewhere of around 3 to 5% for the complete year. This means after the growth of the 0.2% in the first half, the second half is expected to become much stronger. Same as with the EBIT. Here, uh, we expect an adjusted EBIT margin on a group level of around 3 to 4%. Again, uh, after the 3.2% margin in the first half, we see further upside potential. This estimation, however, is clearly uh, depending on the further pandemic development, as said before. Nevertheless, we are becoming more and more optimistic as we clearly see signs for recovery not only in the number of RFQs, but also in the orders and now also in revenues and adjusted EBIT. So that's for the moment. As always, if you have any questions, if you require a meeting or wish somebody to talk to, just give me a notice, give me a ring, write me an email. I will be more than happy to support you in any way. Thank you, everyone, and have a good day. Bye-bye. Hi there, since you watched this company video until the end, I'm guessing you liked the video. And that's probably because we work very hard to create the most engaging and added value content for you. If you're a company and want to find out how we, as seat 11 a can make a company video with and about you, please email us at content at seat11a.com.